Hey everyone, welcome back to Windows Fixer. Today we will fix those pesky PC problems that most people either ignore or just mess up. So if you're into saving time, boosting performance, or just making Windows behave, make sure to hit that subscribe button and let's fix this together. All right, today we're talking about something that confuses a lot of people. Why is Device Guard missing from Group Policy Editor? Even if you follow tutorials step by step, you might not see the option. So don't worry, it's not your fault. It's just Windows being, well, Windows, haha. <laughs> Before we dive into the main fix, there are a few things we need to check first. Otherwise, the option just won't show up at all. First thing, check your Windows edition. Device Guard is only available on Windows 10 or 11 Pro, Enterprise, or Education. If you're on Home Edition, it's just not there. You can upgrade or use alternative registry tweaks, but the Group Policy option won't appear on Home. Simple as that. Second, make sure virtualization is enabled in your BIOS. If you're using Intel, it'll be called VTX. For AMD, it might be called SVM mode. This needs to be enabled, or VBS won't work at all. And without VBS, Device Guard won't load. Third, make sure Secure Boot and TPM 2.0 are enabled. These are also BIOS settings. And yeah, every motherboard shows them differently. So here's my tip. Watch up, search on YouTube by typing your motherboard's exact model and add Enable Virtualization or Enable Secure Boot. There are tons of videos out there already showing the exact steps for your specific board. Now, if you're like, uh, I don't even know what motherboard I have, and don't worry, I got you. Here's how to find it. Press Windows plus R. Type msinfo32. Look for baseboard manufacturer and baseboard product, and that's your motherboard info. Use that to search tutorials on YouTube or Google to help enable the required features. Okay, now let's get into the actual steps. Let's first check if VBS, Virtualization Based Security, is enabled. Here's how you check it. 1. Press Windows plus R, type msinfo32, and press Enter. 2. In the System Information window, scroll down to Virtualization Based Security. 3. If it says Running, you're good to go. If it says not enabled, then you need to enable it manually, and that's what I'll show you right now. Okay, now let's get to the main fix. Step one, enable Hyper-V in Windows features. First thing, let's make sure Hyper-V is enabled in Windows features. Click on the Windows icon on your taskbar and type Windows features. Click on Turn Windows features on or off. In the list, find Hyper-V and check the box next to it. Also, make sure that the Hyper-V platform and Hyper-V management tools are checked. Click OK, and Windows will apply these changes. It may ask you to restart your computer. Step 2. Enable Hyper-V Supervisor Optional Command. Now, there's an additional command you can run to enable the Hyper-V Supervisor, though it may not always be necessary. Press Windows plus X and select Windows Terminal Admin. In the terminal, type the following command and press. Enter bcdedit slash set hypervisor launch type auto. Once that's done, restart your PC. This will ensure that Hyper-V starts up properly each time you boot your system. Step 3. Enable VBS and Device Guard from Group Policy Editor. Now let's get into the Group Policy Editor. Press Windows plus R type gpedit.msc and hit Enter. First, go to Computer Configuration. Next, click on Administrative Templates. Now look for System and go into it. Finally, find Device Guard. On the right side, find Turn on Virtualization Based Security. Double click it, set it to Enabled, and select Standard Security from the options. OK. Once done, click Apply and then OK. Once you've done that, restart your computer again. This will apply all the changes and make sure Device Guard is now enabled. And before we wrap up, make sure there's no conflicting software messing with VBS or Device Guard. Things like third-party antivirus, VirtualBox or other VM tools, kernel-level debuggers. These can all block VBS from running smoothly. If you have them installed, try disabling or uninstalling them temporarily while setting this up. And that's it and your system will be ready for anything that needs VBS. If this helped you, don't forget to like the video. Drop a comment if you still have questions. 
and of course, subscribe for more solid, no-nonsense Windows fixes. This is Austin from Windows Fixer, signing off, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, stay optimized.